Good morning. I'm Reverend Dr. Sarah Williams, Associate Minister here at First Central Baptist Church, where the Reverend Dr. Demetrius Carolina is the pastor. We welcome you to our Bible study this morning, and our Bible study is about social justice from a biblical view. My scripture is Matthew 10, chapter 40 and 42. Anyone who welcomes you welcomes me, and anyone who welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whosoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet reward. And whosoever welcome a righteous person as a righteous person will receive a righteous person reward. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones who is my disciples, truly I tell you that person will certainly not lose their reward. Social justice is based on the concept of human rights and equality and involves a greater degree of economy, egalitarian, through progressive taxation, income restitution, or even poverty, property restitution. Egalitarianism as a political doctrine Social promotes the idea that all people should have the same equal political, social, eco economics, and civil rights. This idea is based on the foundation of inalienable human rights enshrined in such doctrines as the Declaration of Independence. See, it is economic egalitarianism that seeks to remove the barriers of economic inequity by means of restitution of wealth. So we see that implementing the social service program was progressive tax policies take proportional more money from working individuals to raise the standard of living for people who like the same means. A biblical view of social justice. The Bible teaches that God is the God of justice and all his ways are justice. Deuteronomy 32 and 4 tells us he is the rock. His work is perfect for all the ways are just. A God of faithful faithful uh, a God who does not wrong, upright and is, right, and is a just God. The Bible support the notion of social justice in concern and care as shown to the poor and the afflicted. See, Deuteronomy 10 and 18 tells us, he does execute the just judgment of the fatherless and the widows. The Bible often referred to the fatherless, the widows, and the strangers, the people who were not able to provide for themselves or had no support system. You see, the nation of Israel was commanded by God to care for society less fortunate, and their failure to do so was partly the reason for their judgment and their expulsion from the land. According to scripture, social has a social justice has a moral obligation to care for those less fortunate. See, God knows that due to the fall of man, these there would be widows, there would be fatherless and strangers in the society. See, he made provision in the old and the new covenant to care for these outcasts of society. You see, Jesus reflect God sense of justice by bringing the gospel message to even the outcasts of society. The Christian nation of social justice 
is different from the contemporary secular notion of social ju justice. You see, the Bible exhortation to care for the poor and more individuals than society. Each Christian is encouraged to do what he or she to help the least of these. Matthew 23 and 39 tells us to love your neighbor as yourself. And today's political nation of, of social justice replaced the individual with the government, see, with, through taxation and other means. Restribution of wealth. This policy does not enc encourage giving out of love, but it encouraged resentment from those who see their hard-earned money being taken away from them. You see, the Christian, the Christian worldview of social justice doesn't assume the wealthy are the beneficiaries of ill-gotten gain. Wealth is not evil in a Christian worldview, but there is a responsibility and expectation to be a good steward of, of one's wealth because all wealth, all wealth comes from God. The world, social justice operate under the assumption that the wealth explored the poor. Under the Christian concept of stewardship is to give. And, to, and they can give to any charity that they choose to support. But under the contemporary form of social justice, it's those in power within the government who decide who receives the restitution of wealth. The government decides who receives the monies from the taxation. The government decides who they want to have it. He ha we have to be in control. As Christians, we got to be controlled over what the gov. We are not in control of what the government does with all the tax dollars. And sometimes we wonder, what does the government do with all the tax dollars? There is a tension, see, between a good, a God-centered approach to social justice and a man approach to social justice. The man-centered approach sees the government in the role of savior. And it bring and bring in, in a utopia thought government policy. The God-centered approach sees Christ as savior and bringing heaven to earth when he returned. As, as his return, Christ will restore all things and execute perfect justice. Despite the difference between justice as fairness and sharing of charities, numerous of scripture passes make radical generosity necessary to live justly. Just people live a life of honesty and generosity in every aspect of their life. If you're trying to live a life in accordance with the Bible, the concept and the call to justice are inseparable. We do justice when we give all human beings their due as a creation of God. We have to realize that everyone was created by God. Doing justice include not only the righting of wrong, but, but practicing generosity and an interest in social concern, especially towards the poor and the vulnerable. Again and again, in the scriptures, Jesus angrily challenged the religious authorities. He marking, marking them for self-promoting ways. He altered the elite by spending time and showing favor to the poor. He talked to women, which was not allowed, and he eat without regard to the dietary rules. He healed considerable unclean, and he returned them to wholeness. 
He questioned current laws and he challenged their status. And as a result, he became the target of those in authority. But Jesus showed there, there are times when we must stand up and express truth to the power in constructed, meaningful, unyielding ways, despite the possible consequence. Consider how often and in how many ways that Jesus expressed his anger in the gospel. See, we are, we was clear, he was clear and direct, and he was bringing justice or revealing malice of ignorancy. He made personal attacks, but he sought to uncover the evil behind the actions. He lived and taught that the ones who is persecuting us is also created in the image of God and loved by God. Therefore, we have to love our enemies. The scripture tell us, love thy enemy. See, Jesus, as God, is right, rightly angry over oppressed and unjust. So should we be as Christians. See, learning how to balance these teachings and action is a lifelong process. It's not something that's done just overnight. It's a lifelong process for those who choose to follow his ways. The Good Samaritan, everyone knows the story about the Good Samaritan. The Good Samaritan wasn't good because of his origin or because he was traveling. Instead, he looked around him, him and where he lived and worked and where he traveled and he saw a human in need and he got involved. That's what we have to do. See human beings in need and we have to get involved. See, he gave up time, he gave up his money and mostly, most likely, he gave up status and respect in doing this, see, as he went about his day, he, he loved someone and he right and unjust. There are many ways that people of faith can be involved in helping set things right. We can advocate for stricter common sense gun laws, or we can work towards offering much need service for those suffering with illness. Uh, we can encourage our government to shelter the homeless. Uh, we can feed those who are in poverty. We can visit men and women who are in prison. We can help to close children who are in need. Uh, we can serve those uh, with special needs and we can work with the youth who needs an adult mentor. See, the, the, the needs are endless eh? and the unjust are everywhere. It's not just on Staten Island, it's not just in New York, but it is everywhere. In this e ecclesiastical year, it's a good season for each of us to ask ourselves, how can our sense of outrage and injustice be challenged into loving actions we as Christians have an obligation just as Jesus did. We must be angry at inst instance of injustice, speaking out truth to love to our friends and speaking out truth of love to our neighbors and speaking out truth of love to our nation and the world. See, when we witness wrongdoing to others, particularly those who do not have the strength or means to defend themselves, then as people of faith, we need to express the anger of love, the anger that gives us boldness and outspokenness to defend what is right and just. Jesus' example of teaching revealed to us that anger in love can be redirected and encourage positive acts. We often ourselves, we open ourselves to the guidance of the spirit of peace to determine how best to express our moral anger. 
and in all matters how to speak and act in love. Matthew 25 and 45 tells us, whatever you did for one of the least of these, you did it for me. Micah 6, 6 and 8 tells us, with what shall I come before the Lord and bow myself before God on high? Shall I come before him with a burnt offering, with cows a year old, or with the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams, or with a 10,000 rivers of oil? Shall I give my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sins of my soul? He has told you, O oh man, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with God. We thank you for being with us this Wednesday morning doing our Bible study. Amen.